manager and acting chief building official, Dave McClelland at the time, uh, fire prevention officer Davis and myself, um, development coordinator and code enforcement supervisor. Uh, Will Ryder met with Ms. With the uh, uh, Mr. Rockley's attorney, Ms. Julie Canner, to discuss the inspection results, to come up with a priority list to uh, uh, that the uh, that the product that the owner uh, would need to work on uh, to repair the structure, uh, timeline of repairs, and even discuss the possibility of bringing the occupancy of the building to 50% during uh, capacity during those repairs. The results of that meeting are seen here on this slide. Um, Mr. McClellan advised Ms. Canner that cooking in the kitchen must cease immediately. The Haven of Mercy would have 20 days from the 922 meeting to secure an architect or engineer um, to be able to come up with drawings of how those uh, uh, conditions were to be fixed. Uh, the Haven of Mercy would have 30 days from the 922 meeting to have the architect or engineer to meet with the building and fire department to discuss the repairs. Uh, that discussion to include the architect and engineer to submit drawings to include occupancy load for the facility and life safety plans. The city of Johnson City would then have seven up to seven days to review those plans. Uh, the owner should secure contractors while waiting for that approval. And the architect and engineer would have 14 days to make, re make corrections and, and resubmit drawings. Again, with the city to have seven days to review. Um, None of the conditions of the of the timeline were met. Uh, there was a uh, notification uh, letter sent to uh, on 10-7-2020. There was a notification letter sent uh, by certified mail to the property owner for a show cause hearing before the uh, Board of Dwelling Standards and Review. On 10-22, that show cause hearing was conducted uh, with the investigation uh, disclosed basis for a public hearing. Um, on 111-21, notification letter uh, for a public hearing was sent by certified mail. 125-21, uh, public notice of the 128-21 BDSR agenda that that public hearing was to uh, take place at was published in the Johnson City Press. 128-21, uh, the BDSR public hearing was conducted. Uh, Haven of Mercy attorney, Ms. Canner, uh, participated in the public hearing. Uh, during that meeting, uh, the board determined, as a result of the meeting after the public hearing was uh, concluded, the board determined the structure unfit for human habitation. And the board also ordered that the structure be vacated and closed as a place of human occupation or use. And a continuance of the petition of the 225-21 uh, BDSR meeting with the owners or parties and in interest to present, uh, to provide an update on the uh, progress of the repairs. The notification of the board's order was sent by certified mail on 2-3. On 2-9, there was a Zoom meeting with myself, uh, Dave McClellan, uh, attorney Ms. Sandos, uh, with Mr. Rockley and his attorney, Julie Canner, to review the violations and how to engage professionals to repair the structure and um, review permitting requirements and the procedure for applying for those permits. On 2-10-21, a letter was uh, sent notifying the owner to appear before the board on 2-25 tonight's meeting in order to provide an update on progress sent by certified mail. Just a side note here, a part of due diligence on the part of the city, a title search was performed to identify legal parties of interest for the purpose of mail and, uh, mailing notices by certified mail. Uh, on 2-11-21, Jeff Cannon, uh, conducted a courtesy inspection at the request of the property owner. Uh, to date, no permits have been applied for. Um, Jeff Cannon, who at the time of his inspection, at the inspection was a, uh, was the, was a building trades inspector, newly promoted to chief building official. And at this time, he will testify to the results of that, uh, or to, to the results, observations that he made during that meeting on two, or the uh, inspection on 211. Okay, so I probably need to just stop sharing. Maybe the best thing to do here. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you, Will. Uh, yes, I uh, went on an inspection, what is called a courtesy inspection. That is a inspection that is normally requested by the property owner of the building department. <clears throat> and normally what we do is we go out and discuss any issues that they may be having or any questions that they may have, like, do they need a permit for this? Do they need to fix this, fix that? It's just a time for us to come out, communicate with the property owner, what issues that we might see or how they can uh, move forward with their project. So on 211, as, he, as Will stated, uh, went out to the Haven of Mercy, um, talked to uh, Mr. Grant for just a brief moment, introduced myself and, and he asked that I would tour the property with his uh, director there at that uh, property. Uh, I believe um, Miss Blair is her name or Blair is her name. And then his uh, store manager was also there. Also uh, in the room with us was a uh, Dennis Miller, who was a local contractor, uh, project manager for a local contracting company that does a lot of commercial work. And they had volunteered his time to kind of help the Haven of Mercy through this uh, uh, situation to see what they needed to do and, and to help them with some professional advice. So uh, the, the uh, facility manager and myself, the store manager and uh, Dennis Miller went, went to tour the property. At first they requested me to go through the entire property. Um, <clears throat> but I informed them that most of the um, issues that they, they wanted me to look at as far as um, in, the, in the upper floors of the uh, residence or the, the building were all fire department violations, which I told them I do not know the rules for the violations that they were written up for. So therefore could not really venture any opinion on whether they were doing the right thing or if they were uh, correcting what they needed to correct. Upon that, um, I talked with um, them and told them that only thing that I could come out and give them any kind of opinion on was the uh, structural or the building part of the, of the building. Um, I said, you know, I can look at your electrical, I can look at your, at the uh, kitchen uh, issues that you, that you had before. But other than that, I couldn't speak to any of the violations. Um, so we proceeded to the basement where they wanted to show me the uh, electrical, where many of the pictures that you saw uh, during the last meeting were taken. Um, the examples of wiring that is not allowed in a commercial building as uh, that they have by state law and by code. So uh, they took me down there, as we said, no um, permits had been gotten for any of the work on any of the electrical or the kitchen. So I, uh, began to go downstairs into the basement and look at the different areas that they were showing me. Um, they had said that they had corrected all the problems and that um, they had taken care of anything, which I reminded them once again, that with the type of building that they are classified as, as a commercial building with assembly that they were um, required to have uh, a professional drawing, a, a design by a, an engineer. And that then once they submitted the drawings, they could then get permits for that work. But that really most of the work that they were showing me or all the work that they were showing me was just an example of that they had not done the proper steps to get to the point that where they could perform the work 
but also I'm, I made note to them um, that there was still several wires in the basement area that were the illegal wire, the Romex wire. And so I told them that <clears throat> those would be have to be looked at by the engineer. They asked me to look at the work that they had done. And I told them that I could not really say one way or another if it was correct, because without the de design professional uh, giving us a drawing and telling us that this is what they need to do for that situation, whether it was run out of the proper wiring or not, I could not tell them if it was uh, approved work because we do not design the, the, uh, the work. We do not design the wiring. The engineer finds out if they have enough power, the things that they're using that power for, and then he designs what size wires, what kind of outlets, all the design aspect of that is done by the, by the design professional. So after talking over with that and talking over with Mr. Miller and he said that he had a uh, electrical engineer that he could contact to get that started. And then I, um, I told them that uh, until we got any of those drawings or any of that done, there was no way to really tell them that they were making progress. It, I told them that in reality, by showing me that they had done work already, that they were showing me that they weren't following the proper procedures, that they weren't making progress towards getting the building safe. We moved on to the kitchen um, and they had done quite a bit of work in there. Uh, but once again, as I told them there in the, uh, in the kitchen, I said, the problem is that you haven't had any engineers tell you exactly what you need. And I said, even without an engineering uh, drawing or a professional giving us the, the requirements for that, all they had installed and put in for their new kitchen were all residential items, all residential um, um, approved items. None of them would work in a commercial situation. So I reminded them once again that they had to quit thinking of the property as a home. I said, you know, if this was in a house somewhere, it would be perfectly fine. But because they are feeding people on a regular basis, they are a commercial <laughs> restaurant in, this, in a sense. And I tried to stress to them that they had to quit thinking of themselves as just a house, that they needed to, to think of themselves as a commercial kitchen. And any commercial kitchen, you need drawings to tell you exactly what is required and what not is required. And Mr. Miller stated that he understood that he had dealt several times with kitchen equipment and kitchens and commercial settings, and that he also knew somebody that he could contact and um, seek help for them to, to get the proper things that they needed. And I, I, I told them once again, this work has been done, but even without a design professional uh, drawing, I can tell you that it is for residential only and not for commercial. So once again, I, I reminded them, the only thing you've done is showed us that you have done more work without taking the proper steps. I uh, cautioned them and encouraged them to um, get with Mr. Miller and let him look through the list of, of things. I said, you know, uh, you don't need a permit to unplug a electrical cord. That's something that you can do. But I said, anything that involves uh, actual wiring or, or structural parts or mechanical parts or any of the building parts, I said, you have to have these um, drawings to proceed with any work. And um, 
I reminded them of the fact that, and and they said, well, we're not a business. And I think that's part of, of why they had such an issue of, of understanding exactly what was going on. Um, they kept thinking of, of their self as, as a church. And I reminded them that even a church, a church by state law is some of the strictest uh, rules and regulations for doing construction or repairs. I said, even in a church, I said, if you want to add one outlet on a wall in a church, you have to have drawings for that. You can't just put in an outlet. So I hope that they realized that even though they consider themselves a church or, or a, a residence, that because of the way the what they do there and how many people they feed they are not a residential kitchen so we talked a little bit about that and mr miller said that he completely understood and hopefully he was able to communicate that to them and get them uh closer to getting the steps done that they needed to do after that i asked them if there was any more questions that they needed to ask me and uh uh, they took some notes of that meeting and then uh, they said they they thought that uh, they had everything that they needed and I left uh, the uh, business. So if you have any questions about what I said, I'd be glad to answer them. Otherwise, I'll turn it back over to Will. Does the board have any questions for Ms. Uh, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, staff would be happy to entertain any questions. And uh, if you don't have any questions, uh, as you so uh, ordered at the last meeting, um, um, you've requested Mr. Rockley to appear before the board to give uh, testimony to the to the repairs. I, I see his legal representation is is here. I'm not sure if Mr. Rockley is or not, but um, uh, how you we're we're here for questions, or uh, you can ask questions of the uh, of the the the, uh, the owner. Do any board members have questions for any city staff? Okay, if there's no questions. Uh, according to our order, we did request that um, the owner or parties in interest to be present to provide us with an update on the progress. So I'd like to open the floor for that to happen, please. Uh, yes, can everyone hear me? And just to make sure, were you did, were you sworn in at the beginning of the meeting, Mr. Muse? Uh, I was not, but similar to was navigated at the last hearing. I'm here uh, in legal representation, uh, not to offer any testimony or things of that nature. So I, I don't believe that uh, I would need to be required to be sworn in. Can we you're, clear, you're Can correct. I take a moment to clarify with staff with that one? That that is correct. Okay. Yes. Uh, so I am here uh, today on behalf of uh, the Haven of Mercy, uh, owned by uh, Mr. Rockley, as well as tenants uh, there at 123 uh, Miller Street address. And I have a plan to proceed uh, generally to just give the board some updates. Uh, it was requested uh, that that would be the nature of what would occur today. And so we forwarded uh, some, you know, first note that we forwarded some documents uh, uh, to the board and, and relevant parties that are present here today. And we do uh, have those documents with us. Uh, if anyone doesn't have them with us, my co-counsel, Attorney Amber Lee, is also on the call. And we do have an opportunity uh, if at any point in time it's necessary uh, to screen share those documents. But what I'd like to do is, is generally uh, provide the board as requested some of the updates and, and uh, progress uh, that's been made to date. Uh, and maybe make some specific notes uh, and answer, of course, open up to any questions or concerns uh, that the board and uh, various persons uh, may have. <clears throat> so as forwarded uh, to the board uh, was a letter from uh, GTL Construction Company. 
which has been hired uh, by the Haven of Mercy as a, a general contractor in this matter. That letter uh, uh, affirms that uh, GTL is working with the Haven of Mercy on regards to their 123 Millard Street address. And that's in an effort to correct any outstanding code violations uh, that are before uh, the board. Um, they also, the, the letter also references um, that the general contractor is working with uh, Blazer Engineering uh, for the electrical engineering portion of the, product, uh, of the project. Uh, and that uh, affirms that all electrical work will be performed by a qualified licensed electrical contractor. That letter also notes that the services of Newman Heating and Air Conditioning have been secured to handle uh, the kitchen uh, exhaust hood uh, matter and any violations uh, that may pertain uh, to their expertise. The letter goes on to note that Captive Air will, uh, has been secured to provide the engineered stamp drawings for submission and approval uh, and the manufacturing that requires components for the exhaust hood. Uh, and any related items. Uh, and then that letter concludes by, of course, welcoming any questions or concerns, but uh, also affirming that all work will be properly permitted upon the approved drawings and inspected by the respective departments uh, of the city of Johnson City. Now attached to that letter, we also uh, typed, all that, that first letter references Blazer Engineering, but we also provided a letter uh, on Blazer Engineering's uh, letterhead and that letter was uh, uh, sent to Mr. Miller, and that confirms uh, the working relationship that's been taking place. It confirms scheduled visitations uh, that have uh, already occurred, uh, but that have uh, taken place in an effort to move forward and progress uh, uh, the situation uh, as necessary. As you can see, uh, my co-counsel has shared uh, that second letter from Blazer Engineering there on the screen. We also included uh, in the documents provided a proposal uh, that was provided by Newman Air. The proposal regards uh, the hood uh, and the fans and the electrical systems necessary for some of those kitchen appliances that were previously referenced in this hearing and also gives a uh, quote total. It's an itemized list of all the work uh, showing that they've been uh, contacted on that, that they're looking and moving uh, forward with that. Uh, also attached in those documents, we included a uh, quotation from Trimble Company. And although perhaps uh, uh, some of these quotations, the quotations uh, address some of the door issues that were discussed. And I'm aware that there has been a little bit of uh, uh, some confusion of, uh, about what are exactly the building codes properly before the board and, and some of the firing codes. But we would submit that generally, even to the extent that this would relate to any uh, uh, alleged fire code violations, this also goes to show uh, that steps uh, have been taken uh, and, and are being taken. Also attached to that uh, uh, information provided to the board um, is a letter uh, from the, the uh, uh, Carl G. Gutschow, the Director of Architecture. Uh, and that is again affirming uh, the renovations and that one's dated today. Some of those prior ones have an earlier date to today, but that's an up-to-date, as of today, confirmation uh, that they are working to bring the project to completion uh, and their openness uh, to any questions. And so, you know, generally we've submitted these uh, so that the board could, could see these and see that uh, even from the licensed professionals involved that steps have uh, been taking, they're being taken. We also, uh, you know, have in our possession a, a number of documents close to around a hundred or so that have been taken within the last 48 hours uh, that ultimately would show some of the other specific things. Now, I'm aware that some of the conduct uh, described uh, does require permits, that was, as was alluded to earlier. Uh, but there's also a good amount of conduct that doesn't uh, require uh, permits to be approved. As referenced earlier, uh, that would include some of the extension cord issues and things uh, that have been navigated. But all of those uh, have, been, have been fixed. Uh, there's been, uh, uh, and, and as I said before, some of these may speak to fire code violations and we understand those aren't properly before the board. But as a whole and to the degree it's asserted that some of these fire code violations may interlap with the building code violations, uh, we have, we have a, a, our efforts cover the entire gambit. And so Mr. Mr. Rockley, the Haven of Mercy in effect has went above uh, and beyond just the building code matters before the board today. That includes all the fire extinguishers have been replaced. 
uh, inspected by uh, fire officials. Uh, we've had uh, solid uh, uh, doors have been placed on the facilities. Some of the, the egress issues, which again, a fire code issue, uh, those have been alleviated. But again, also even some of the issues concerning uh, the back uh, fire escape uh, and a fuel tank underneath it, that fuel tank has been removed. Uh, we have uh, uh, evidence of workers have been working on that today, reinforcing it and fixing some of those issues that were uh, highlighted. Uh, but there's also been uh, a number of the electrical and mechanical issues that don't require permits uh, that have been uh, taken up. And uh, even to the degree that some things would require permits, such as, for example, uh, the exit signs being illuminated, we have brought those issues up to the point to where we're just we're merely waiting uh, the, the approved electrical work. So for example, new exit signs uh, have been purchased, put in place, and obviously we have not installed those given the electrical expertise that would need to be uh, involved in those things. But really this it's a whole host, a number of things uh, that have to be bulleted point out are a couple pages, issues such as the crash, crash exit bars uh, on every door, there were uh, evacuation plans and various things posted on all the floors. Some of the locks and things that are on the door that were complained of previously have been changed and those issues have been alleviated. Storage issues, uh, both whether it's in the, uh, the basement and, and some of the storage buildings, those have been alleviated. Uh, there was uh, various things, power supplies, there were covers placed on some of the various uh, ceiling uh, uh, fixtures and electrical outlets that uh, the board will recall being referenced in the last hearing. And so all those are, are a little bit more specifics on the, on the, uh, the generals uh, that we've provided. We are of course open uh, to any uh, questions or pointed concerns or inquiries uh, of the board. And, uh, and I will note that you know, Mr. Rockley and uh, Mr. Walter as a party and in interest living in the, in the, at the 123 Millard Street address, they are, are present and that uh, you know, my statements today and these statements are in a representative capacity uh, for them. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Do any board members have any questions for Mr. Muse? I, I have a question, this is Dave Jenny. Uh, several of the documents you just showed on the screen were unreadable. Uh, I, I would like to see them in a form that I can read them. Well, I'll be more than uh, happy. We can share them again. I can view them on my screen currently. Uh, and that, I'm looking on a cell phone, not a computer. But I can also uh, say that they were forwarded to, and I can give you uh, the specific individuals they were forwarded to today. So give me one moment. I'm pulling up my email. There may be someone uh, there who can reference you to those. Uh, I know they were sent to Ms. Sandoz uh, with the, uh, the city. They were also sent to, give me one second, I'm checking here. They were also sent to uh, Mr. McClellan and they were also sent to Mr. Ryder. Uh, and all of those persons uh, would have access. And as I said, I'm not sure exactly what the viewing issue is here in this case, but we, we do have those available here on my screen and, and they are legible. Uh, I'm on a full-size computer screen here, and some of the ones through the middle were, were just very faded, and I could not read them at all. Mr. Jenny, is there a specific screen that you would like to view again? Um, I cannot actually give you a specific screen. There were just several. Let's just start the at the top and scroll down for them. Sure. I think it was Newman's Heating and Air. Uh, yeah. the, it was a little rough to read. I, I would imagine that was probably it. And I will note I also have a question. What uh, I would note that on that issue point, there is one document that is basically, as you see, the document on the screen is black typeface. The other document does have a gray typeface, and that may be the cause. I know what you're referencing. That may be the specific document you're referring to. for city staff um, is the removal of a fuel tank does that typically require a permit there, there are actually several things there that um, 
were mentioned that require a permit um, to modify the hardware, exit hardware on any of the doors, um, as well as the removal of that tank, um, and then any um, repairs to the, uh, uh, I, I don't know if this was mentioned here, or maybe I picked it up in, in an email previous, uh, repairs possibly to the uh, exit off the rear, it's kind of like a, a, a fire exit, like a, a steel grate on the exterior. Uh, again, I, I don't know if that was mentioned tonight or if it was something I picked up earlier, but yeah, absolutely. Um, those things, even though they aren't in the list of items that we have mentioned, they are specific to um, fire needs. Um, we we focused on building systems. Um, we didn't we didn't bring those things into play, um, but they do require a permit to be corrected. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. I, I just came across some of them that, that are not readable, like uh, Proposal Haven Mercy Project, uh, Newman Heat and Air. I can read the top part proposal, but the rest of it below there is not readable. Uh, be more than happy to send them to your email. Uh, but they, as I said, they've been forwarded to Mr. McClellan, Ms. Sandoz, uh, and Mr. Ryder. Uh, happy to we forward them. We can send those. We, we, if, as, uh, as long as legal counsel says it's okay, um, we can forward those to you, Dave. Um, we, I, I received it at 5.07 p.m., so didn't have a chance before the meeting to really go through and review everything in here. Um, but yeah, we the next one coming up there is not readable either. If you could send them to me, I'd very much appreciate being able to, to read what's being presented. So we'll be able to send those. Yeah, I, I was looking where I got mine. My, mine came in at 5 38. So it was right whenever I sat down to get logged in. Um, but yeah, no, we're, we're more than happy to forward what we've received. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Does the board have any more questions for? the um, owner or the party, any parties in interest? Ms. Sandos, did you have, any, have anything to add or not? with regard to what's been presented? Yes, just before I move forward. <laughs> um, no, there's, there's okay. nothing to add. Okay. Um, I, I just a point of clarification and I, I think I'm, we're probably all done with the screen share. Is any, are the board members done with the screen share then uh, Ms. Lee could yes, stop please. putting the screen. We can see each other better. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes, I, I just wanna make sure that I understand um, the, the timing here. It appears that uh, Haven of Mercy has secured um, some services of an engineering firm. Um, and that's a, that's a good first step. But in the meantime, other work has happened that should have been permitted, but hasn't yet, but hasn't been permitted because it can't be permitted because we don't have the necessary drawings. Is that a correct statement? Probably for um, yes. Mr. Muse and staff. Yes, okay. Thanks, Rick. Yes. Okay, just wanted to be sure I understood that. And I guess my thing, I believe that those permitted works and they were in reference to some statements I made in this hearing, but it was stated that all of those permits were fire code permits. And so, uh, you know, as far as I haven't heard any testimony about work that's been done that would require a building code permit that was done nonetheless without a building code permit. I'd be, I'd be glad to speak to that. Um, there, there's a little bit of confusion there. So we, we don't have any sort of uh, fire permitting. Um, all permitting goes through building, even to correct uh, fire matters. Um, so the, the, the items that were, what it sounds to be have been performed, they're minor, you know, they're not, they're not major items by any means. Um, uh, 
they're, they're, they have the potential to be impactful, but, but you know, things like the, like the door hardware and the removal of the tank, um, they do require a building permit, even though they were not an issue that we brought up as something that was needed to be addressed via building. I'm afraid Dave has frozen. <laughs> right. <laughs> Do you want to give him a second and see if he comes back? And I think uh, hopefully Dave can get back on. In the meantime, uh, Mr. Cannon can speak to some of the things that we're talking about that require uh, other permits. Oh, he's still frozen. Yeah, he's frozen. Okay. Sorry. Um, as Dave was saying, uh, you know, the, those um, things that he was talking about, the door hardware, um, the different things that had been quoted as fire um, violations, um, those do require permits, as he said. Uh, so those were done without permits. Uh, we never told them that anything that the fire department had listed as a violation was not, didn't require a permit. Uh, we told them that anything that had to do with repairing the building, they needed to find out before they did any of that, if it did require a permit. Uh, so to answer your, your basic statement or your question, uh, two or three of the things that he mentioned tonight uh, were done that I didn't look at those things. I looked only in the basement and the uh, kitchen area. Those were, uh, as he stated, done without permits because you can't give a permit if you don't have the drawings. And then the work that had done on the electrical that they've done so far had been done without permits. And then all of the um, uh, kitchen work had been done without permits. Thank and you. I would just, and I would just say the electrical, the electrical matter I referenced. The, the only thing electrical that I referenced as being done was re in regards to uh, extension cords. Uh, and to my knowledge, that was stated earlier as not requiring a permit. Uh, yes, and, and it was. Uh, that was not something that I was quoting you as as uh, needing a permit. The electrical issues are the ones that we talked about uh, in the original meeting. The Romex that was run inside a commercial building, which is not allowed by code, and they had changed some of them. There was still some in there on the 11th when I was there, um, but uh, they had wanted me to look at uh, the wiring that they had had a a licensed contractor do, but uh, since we didn't have any drawings, I couldn't either say if it was right or wrong. Well, I, I would just like to say that I'm pleased to see that there is some progress. I'm, I'm sorry that this work has been done without a permit, but the point of a permit really is that, as I has been explained to this board before, correct me staff if I'm wrong, that that means there, there is a plan that the, is going to get the owner to the desired outcome, which is, you know, a repair in such a way that it can be easily approved. Um, there have been other situations where permits had to be issued after the work was done because the owner did fail to get a permit. So not getting a permit at this point um, in my mind is, is not a hanging offense, but we, they definitely need a permit for this work as soon as possible, because I would hate for see, to see the owner put a lot of expense into doing work that ultimately does not meet the code. That doesn't right, and, anybody well. And I think part of that problem is, and that's why the, the work that they've done without permits or is so concerning to us, in the building department is just like the example of the kitchen. Uh, I know Haven of Mercy spent some money uh, getting those things done, doing those things, but they were all wrong. 
right. and if they'd had the the uh, design professional that that we started way back in the beginning of this if you followed uh, his timeline and setting up a, a timeline of uh, getting an architect getting contractors getting plans in that was all discussed beforehand so even though it, it's normally and it's not really a hanging offense as you as you mentioned but it is also a pattern of not following the directions that we have given him to do. So I guess our next step as a board uh, would be to see if anyone would like to make a motion related to the information that we have heard tonight. Um, yes, I'm, I'm prepared to, to make a, a couple of motions, actually. Um, I, as I just stated, I'm, I am encouraged that there has been some action um, finally taken. Um, it has not been uh, brought up at, at this meeting but uh, it's clear the attorneys are here and we all know that um, some legal action has taken place. So I'd just like to say that I do believe that the board made the right decision um, when we did uh, order that property to uh, be vacated and closed. Um, I apparently uh, some, some of the residents do not feel that they had received proper notice um, it's unfortunate that Mr. Rockley, if Mr. Rockley did not inform the people um, living there about that, because it definitely impacts their lives. Um, but out of a sense of fairness and openness, um, I do have a, two motions that I think taken together uh, will allow the residents to at least temporarily remain in the Haven of Mercy and provide the occupants of the of the property, an opportunity to address this board. So my first motion, so that they can at least temporarily remain in the facility, my first motion is that we rescind our order to vacate and close the property at 123 West Millard Street. I second that. Hey. Uh Ms. Lawrence, if you'll take a roll call vote, please. Okay. Oh, wait, sorry. Any discussion? We have a second from Jonna. Oh, thank you. Yes, any discussion from the board? Sorry, I was about to move forward. With no discussion, Ms. Lawrence, if you'll uh, complete a roll call vote, please. Ms. Hyder. Recuse. Ms. Mr. Jenny. Reluctantly, yes. Ms. Robbins? Yes. Ms. Hunter? Yes. Ms. Lockmiller? Yes. Motion approved. My second motion um, is that we take action to cause a public hearing uh, to be held on March 11th, 2021 concerning the property at 123 West Millard Street. I second that. Any discussion from the board? There being none, Ms. L Ms. Santos, did you need to speak at this point or did you unmuted yourself? Or you want to wait till after the vote? Oh, I needed to seek clarification as to uh, the purpose of the public hearing, uh, who that will be directed towards. But uh, public hearing so that the, uh, the occupants of the property and those that were occupants of the property uh, as of uh, the time of the order have an opportunity to address the board of any uh, harm that may that they feel may come to them uh, by this property if the property were to be vacated and closed. Is that clear enough or do we need to Keep going with that. <laughs> no, that clarifies your purpose of your public. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Is there any discussion among the board? There being none, Ms. Lawrence, if you'll call a roll call vote, please. Ms. Hyder. Recuse. Mr. Jenny. Yes. Ms. Robbins. Yes. Ms. Hunter. Yes. Ms. Lockmiller. Yes. Motion approved. Uh, Chairwoman, if I may. Yes, please, Ms. Sandos. We would request that um, given the, the transient nature of the occupants and we want to ensure that notices provided of the public hearing to all uh, occupants, um, we would ask that council provide the name of the occupants, which was requested by or suggested by the chancellor. Um, if we can have the name of all the occupants by 930 tomorrow, that way we can ensure that the certified notice is sent properly to each one of those folks. Um, do we need to make a motion to uh, compel them to do that? Or is that something that can just be done as a request? I, both are present on, on the meeting. I, I imagine that can be done by. We will request. provide it tomorrow. Yeah, we, if we can get that by 930, that way we can ensure the certified letters are timely sent out of each of the occupants that would be uh, residing in the Haven of Mercy. Thank you. Just for clarification, was there agreement to that request? Thank you. Yes, Attorney Lee acknowledged that that didn't seem to be any problem, but they'll be able to provide that list of all the occupants early in the morning. Okay. Okay, I think we are ready to move on to our next agenda item, unless anyone else has anything else to add about, any board member has anything else to add about this. Okay, on to our next one. Uh, the next one, we have no public hearings tonight. Uh, we have one new property, 1111 Afton Street. City staff will share information. I'll get my screen going again here. Great. Okay. 111, just verify I am unmuted and I'm sharing, correct? Yes, you are. Okay. <laughs> we see you and hear you. Okay. Um, 111 Afton Street, uh, the property owner is Robert Franklin. The code enforcement officer is Michelle Bowers. This case was opened up in December of 2020. Uh, tonight's the show cause hearing. Uh, um, let's get straight to the pictures of the property here. Property is being uh, cited for, uh, as you can read on the slide here, um, sanitary facilities, uh, water required, electrical minimum requirements, uh, general plumbing, exterior of the structure, unsafe conditions, building security, all building codes adopted, uh, the stairways, decks, porches, balconies, roofs and drainage, unsafe building, protective treatment, window skylight and door frames, uh, wind glazed windows, uh, windows and doors, exterior walls. This, uh, you can see quite a bit of damage here to the, uh, to the soffit. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the yard that we can take care of through general, whether it's a contract or abatement with a 13102. Um, Again, uh, electrical issues here. You can see this uh, uh, over here on this particular picture, um, and the balconies. You can see holes here in the uh, in the in the in the posts. Um, example of the of the window. A uh, great deal of exterior damage to this property, um, and we are making a motion uh, recommendation that. Uh, you order a public hearing on this. I make a motion to create a public hearing on the property at 1111 Afton Street. I second that. For all parties to be notified. Did you get the second, Ms. Lauren? I'll second that. Yes, was that Miss Robbins who made the second? Uh, no. Mr. Jenny. Yeah. 
Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Are you any ready? discussion? Okay. Any discussion from the board? There being none, Ms. Lawrence, if you'll do a roll call vote, please. Ms. Hyder. Agree. Ms. Mr. Jenny. Yes. Ms. Robbins. Yes. Ms. Hunter. Yes. Ms. Lockmiller. Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Uh, next up is our items to be rescinded. 312 Dyer Street. Wait, you have more on your agenda than I do? No. Oh, I don't have, that's funny. I just have Afton and then I don't have, maybe that I didn't print a, it. Oh, should be a page wait. two of your agenda possibly. Yeah. You are correct. I printed on both sides to save paper because- You, you know. gave me a heart attack. <laughs> no, nope, it's there. I just printed on both sides and didn't turn to the back. All right, so next one is 312 were, Dyer Street. You were being conscious of the environment. I am. <laughs> All right, 312 Dyer Street. Um, bottom line, this has been demolished by city crews. Okay. Uh, well, there's the... Uh, yep, it's been demolished on February 5th, 2021. Okay. Motion to rescind the property at 312 Dyer Street. I second that. Any discussion? There being none, Ms. Lawrence, will you call a roll call vote, please? Ms. Hyder? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Yes. Ms. Robbins? Yes. Ms. Hunter? Yes. Ms. Lockmiller? Yes. Motion approved. And now from page two of your agenda, 518 Hart Avenue. <laughs> Five one eight uh, Hart Avenue. This was uh, this was demolished by owner, and there's uh, on February second, two thousand twenty-one. Has that been seated and anything? Is it cleaned up, finished? Officer Bennett informed me it has been seated. Move to uh, rescind the property at 518 Dyer Street. Oh, I second that. Parks, wait, it's 518 Hart Avenue. Oh, 518 Hart Avenue. You're right. Sorry. Yeah. Right, looking at the wrong line. Second that. Any discussion? There being none, Ms. Lawrence, if you'll do a roll call vote. Ms. Hyder? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Yes. Ms. Robbins? Yes. Ms. Hunter? Yes. Ms. Lockmiller? Yes. Motion approved. And next up is 907 Johnson Avenue. 907 uh, Johnson Avenue was demolished by city crews on February 10th, 2021. And there's a, there's a picture of the, of the lot after demo. Move to rescind the property at 907 Johnson Avenue. I second. Any discussion? There being none, Ms. Lawrence, if you do a roll call vote. Ms. Hyder? Yes. Mr. Jenny? Yes. Ms. Robbins? Yes. Ms. Hunter? Yes. Ms. Lockmiller? Yes. Motion approved. Well, there certainly are a lot of uh, nice smooth lots for people to build houses on yes somebody does <laughs> right okay if you all will can you all stop screen sharing here we are oh, there we go okay we're back uh so uh is there any other business tonight i would just like to make a a comment uh, congratulating Jeff on his promotion and mm -hmm. saying that I, I think he did a very good presentation being a former chief building official. I, I, I was quite impressed. Thank you. Yes. Hey. Yes, Thank congratulations, you. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. So I guess this makes up for last month's, uh, was it a 12 hour meeting that we had where I ended up having to like stretches during the meeting. I know you all were <laughs> like, cause I was bouncing up and down because I was losing feeling in my legs. So this makes up for it. So uh, with that being said, um, I guess we are ready to adjourn at 7.04 p.m. That's a record for us. Two oh, records adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We go all. on an average. We're doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. Thanks. Thank you.